be in the field, he has to be willing to come out of his territory. For a shepherd to accomplish his assignment many times, he has to be willing to come out of his territory. So when you read Luke chapter 2, you realize that the angels are not addressing Mary and Joseph. The angels aren't writing to Mary and Joseph. I mean, Mary and Joseph are the ones who need a visitation from an angel. They tired. Their Uber, Brother Donkey, has it been a rough trip. It been an expensive trip. Come on, somebody. It, it, there was no shocks on that Uber. <laughs> there was no AC in the Uber. There was no bottled water on standby. There was no USB port. Mm. To keep you charged and in connection 24-7. And here ain't, the angel isn't visiting them, but the Bible said the angels came to talk to the shepherds. Uh oh And I ask again, why do the angels even care to talk to the shepherds? Why, who are these shepherds? And why do they deserve a revelation? <laughs> Mary's the one who's in labor. Mary's the one doing all the work. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Men, men get a cold. If I even sense that Pastor Bev is sick, I got to out sick her real quick. Because one of us... <laughs> Oh, you ain't, you ain't, you aren't with me here now. Men folk, yeah, we strong, but there are weaknesses where we like to be coddled and made to feel like the world revolves around us. And we're not the one that endured labor. I can't get no amens. Why do the shepherds deserve the revelation when Mary's the one who's in labor, Mary's the one who's wrapping her baby in milk rags, about to lay her baby in a trough. <laughs> what, what you call sackcloths or swaddling clothes or nothing more than milk rags. So if anybody needs a word, a revelation from the angels of on high, it would, should be Mary. <laughs> but instead the angels don't even go and talk to Mary. The angels run to the shepherds that are in the field and they tell the shepherds in the field, leave your sheep and go to a barn in Bethlehem because your sheep are just a shadow. Track with me. Leave your sheep in the field because your sheep are just a shadow. What's happening in the barn is the reality. <laughs> the sheep are the shadow. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. But what's happening in the barn is the reality. Your temporal extract or curricular activities are the shadow. But what's happening in the spirit is the reality. You can't see it here because <laughs> you're so focused on temporal. Oh, yeah. And, but that's just a shadow to what's reality because the spirit is the reality. You were born in eternity and manifested in time. And don't get so comfortable here in time. Because your reality is in spirit. Come on, somebody. Uh, I was teasing with Brother Mateo this morning that him and Brother Fields both have on a pink shirt and brown 
pants. I said, that's what I had to wear when I worked at Baskin Robbins. I had a pink shirt and brown pants. That was my field. Mm. But the reality was I only wore that for a season. Come on, somebody. I, and I, by the way, you guys are sharp looking men this morning. But what I'm saying to you is don't get focused just on your temporal and miss what God's doing and miss what God's saying. You can be over here and totally miss the next season of your life. And the angels say, the sheep are just a shadow, but what's happening in the barn is the reality because your sheep represent as a shadow what Jesus is. And he tells the shepherd, the sheep will be fine. Go look in that barn. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Behold, you are watching the wrong sheep. You are watching the wrong sheep. None of the blood from none of those sheep will resolve the sin issue and set the captive free and loose them that are bound. But there is a lamb that just hit the world whose blood will redeem from the curse of the law and from the sin and the death. There is a lamb, there is a lamb that you ought to have your eyes on, Brother Shepherd. Oh, I pray for Bethel Family Worship Center. Father, fix my eyes on you. Fix my eyes on Jesus. On this Sunday morning, about to head into some summer months, fix my eye on you, Jesus. Can I go a little deeper? And then I begin to recognize that Jesus is merely reenacting what Abel did. Abel came into, the, into Cain's field and Jesus coming to earth is literally him coming into Satan's field. Stay with me. Because Satan at that time has been given dominion over the earth realm. Stay with me. Wake up. And God has cast Satan out of heaven. And Jesus says, when he enters into the field, <laughs> not only will I run you out of heaven, I will even come down to your own territory and I will overthrow you in your own territory because I've come to break the curse that was upon man. Can I get an amen from somebody? You may have killed Abel, but you won't destroy me. I'm coming where you are. <laughs> I'm coming where you are. And thus we see that in the process of 40 and two generations, he stepped down through the corridor of time and here comes Jesus uh, down where they are and here comes Jesus uh, here comes Jesus uh, here comes Jesus uh, 42 generations later that Luke talks about uh, tell somebody here comes Jesus uh, tell America here comes Jesus uh, tell this crazy world uh, here comes Jesus uh, tell the people on Venice here comes Jesus tell the people who are in grief and depression here comes Jesus tell the people who are upset and disturbed here comes Jesus are you ready here he comes thank you for joining us join us every week for our worship experiences on Sundays at 8.45 and 11 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for midweek we have life groups available for all ages and children's ministry available for ages 0 to 11. 
visit our website at bfwc.net for more information. We're saving a seat for you at BFWC, where we're maturing in Christ and reaching in love.